Hello, I'm 8mm Mauserman. You guys probably figured out right now, I like guns. I like them for a number of reasons, from having the ability to protect others, to an interest in history or mechanics that these interesting firearms have, to just enjoying going out to the range and shooting. However, I know that in some countries, people can have a limited number of firearms. Maybe they can only own three, or sometimes it's really difficult to get even one, so people who have an interest in firearms can only own one gun. So what I would like to do is, the statistics that I have most often heard quoted states that the average firearms that a gun owner in America owns is seven. Now, I own more than that, but what I would like to do is start with, if I could only have one gun, what would I own? then do if I could only have three guns, what would I own? Then five guns, then seven guns, ending at the average number uh, for American gun owners. However, since this is the first video, so it would be pretty short if I only talked about one gun, I'd like to start by just talking about some of the contenders that I had for what my first gun could be. Now, to be clear, this isn't just going to be what is the most practical firearm that I could own, but also what is the most interesting that I could own to me. Since I don't just have guns for one reason, there are a number of different things at play here. And so the choice I pick is going to be a compromise of those things. So let's get started talking about some of the things that just didn't quite win out. One of the first things that I thought of was buying something like this shotgun. This one is a Mossberg 520 gauge, although I would probably prefer a 12 gauge just because of things like ammo availability. But this 20 gauge is the shotgun that I happen to have. I think it has a 22 or 24 inch barrel. Let's see if it says on the side here. 22 inch barrel. Uh, the reason why a shotgun came up pretty early on my list is because they're one of the most versatile firearms that you can get. They can fire birdshot, which is good for hunting birds or clay pigeon shooting. You can get buckshot, which is good for close encounters or for hunting deer in heavily wooded areas. And you can get slugs, which can oftentimes push the range of shotguns like this out to around 100 yards. And so inside of 100 yards, you have a really effective firearm. Also, in my personal opinion, a shotgun is probably the most amount of fun that you can have for the least amount of money when it comes to firearms. Now, for me personally, I have a few things that I would like to consider with this. One, if I was only owning one firearm, I would probably be willing to spend more money on the one that I owned. So something like cost to the amount of fun is less of a concern. Two, I would probably want to go with a pump because pumps can cycle reliably with more types of ammo than something like a semi-auto. However, that does come with the major drawback of if you're in a defensive situation, you do need to pump the slide every single time. Now, I did pump it kind of softly there, and that's just because this mic is really sensitive to loud noises. The third reason is because I personally just enjoy rifles more than I enjoy shotguns, and that really does come down to a personal thing. So, one of the second things I thought about was a military surplus rifle like this Ishapur 2A1. Now, even though the channel is called 8mm Mauser Man instead of 762 NATO Man, I think that this Ishapur 2A1 might actually be one of my favorite surplus rifles, if not my favorite surplus rifle. I really like the caliber, I really like the uh, relatively high capacity magazine for a military surplus rifle. Usually they have 5 or 6, so 10 to 12 is actually quite good. Uh, I really like the sights on these, I really like the trigger, I like the cock on close action, and because I do like that history element, um, this is a really cool rifle. Also, in my opinion, Lee Enfields do have a pretty fast action, and so what that means is that you can get pretty quick with it, and so although I wouldn't want to have something like this in a defensive encounter, it might be more suitable than some other bolt action rifles in the market. And again, that's not me saying that a bolt action is suitable for a defensive encounter, just that if I had to take one bolt action rifle for a defensive encounter, something like this would probably be it, although I'd probably want it to be shorter because I don't think you'd be able to make use of this long barrel. One other thing I really like about this rifle in particular is that you can find 7.62x51 just about anywhere. You can find it at Walmart, you can find it at most sporting goods stores, um, and although it is kind of pricey compared to some other surplus ammos, it is really available. However, some major drawbacks of this is that, in my opinion, and this is very contentious, so argue about this in the comments, in my opinion, Lee Enfields aren't necessarily the most reliable bolt-action military surplus rifle. They are still, in my opinion, reliable enough, but they do have some issues. 
Again, my opinion, you can argue about that if you disagree with it, and I'd love to hear your reasoning. Two, they are heavy and long. Um, so depending on what you wanted to use this for, you might run into some places where the weight and length is prohibitive. If you know me, you probably know that my uh, 8mm Mauser 2447 is one of my favorite Mausers that I own, and there are a, quite a few uh, reasons for that. I think that this would be another really strong contender, and here are a few things that I like about it. Mausers are probably some of the most reliable military surplus bolt actions, and they're really rugged. They handle gas really well, they handle over pressure really well. A few things that I don't like is, personally, I'm not a huge fan of sights on uh, Car 98K and battered Mausers. However, if I wanted to fix that, what I would probably do is I would buy a mount that could help you attach a scope without permanently modifying the gun. That way it would still fulfill my history desire, uh, but I would be able to have some more capabilities with it and have a scope instead of sights that I personally don't really like. I do really like that military surplus bolt actions can feed from stripper clips, so if you were in a situation where you needed more rounds quickly, you could do that. One other thing I like about this rifle, more than the Ishapur 2A1, is that the Ishapur 2A1 is in 7.62x51, and in some people's opinions, including my own, you should not frequently fire 308 through it. You can, I just don't think you really should all that often. And so if you wanted to use it for something like hunting, an Ishapur 2A1 may not be your best bet, whereas something like this has plenty of hunting ammo available. And, in my opinion, probably the three most common large caliber uh, ammunitions available in military surplus cartridges would be 7.62x54R, although that one I'm not sure about the future of with everything going on in Russia, 7.62x51, which the Ishapur 2A1 shoots, and 8mm Mauser that this shoots. Now, let's be real. In a modern context, these two rifles probably aren't the most practical. So let's talk about a third rifle that I heavily considered. Those two were kind of afterthoughts, but the first one that I considered was my M16A1 pattern rifle. Now, there are a number of reasons I would choose this over other ARs. One is the history. This one, with exception to the receiver and the barrel, is all built on an original M16A1 parts kit, which gives it some really interesting history behind it, and as I started with, history is something that's really important to me. And because it has that 20 inch barrel, it gives you a little more power that might be helpful for different situations. If I was going to be doing something like hunting deer, uh, 223 is strong enough to do that, and if you have the right cartridge, and it could get stabilized in the barrel well, you could have a lot of success doing that. I know that is kind of a contentious thing. A lot of people think you need to hunt with a larger caliber, but if you could only have one rifle, I believe that this one could do the task. Now in this situation, I'm not talking about having one lower and swapping around different uppers. I'm saying one complete rifle. So I did really consider this. Uh, maybe if I did do an AR, I would want one with a flat top so that I could attach a scope mount or something like that. However, I do really like the A1 sights, and with something like this gooseneck or a well-made Picatinny mount for right here, you could mount optics pretty well. So there is a workaround to that, and since this is a compromise, I could be happy with that compromise since I like the M16A1 so much. This was a dream rifle of mine for a long time, and when I actually put it together, I was really happy. However, there is one reason why all of these long guns isn't really something that I would pick. And the reason for that is that being a civilian and somebody who really desires to be a civilian only, none of those are really as practical as a handgun. And so if I really had to pick one gun that I was going to have for the rest of my life, I would pick something a lot closer to this. Uh, probably not this exact gun, but we'll talk about that in just a second. This is a Bull Armory Cherokee. It's basically a CZ-75 clone made in Israel in 9mm. There are many things that I really like about this particular handgun. Now, uh, this cheapest flashlight on Amazon, that's a video that's gonna be coming up soon, so you'll get to see that, and then we will talk about it. But right now we're just talking about the handgun. So this is in nine millimeter, and it can hold 17 rounds of standard in a magazine, or you can get 19 round magazines that are still made well and feed reliably. That's something I would actually like to get my hands on. One of the reasons I choose specifically a CZ-75 pattern pistol is because I really like double action, single action. 
And so I would want to go with something either like a CZ75 or a Beretta 92. Plus both of those pistols do have military history involved with them, which is something that's important to me. Now this one is polymer framed and I'm not a huge fan of the trigger. However, the sights are quite nice. And if I was only going to have one, I would probably shell out the extra cash and pick up a real CZ75. This one is really interesting because it was a uh, Israeli security pistol, not really police, but more like security forces. And I don't really have any interest in getting political right now. I bought this out of the surplus market in the United States, um, but it is just a really fascinating little pistol to have. I really like the way it fits in my hand. Um, and so it's just really cool. I haven't quite put enough round through yet to say whether or not it's a quality handgun or not, but something like this is what I would pick if I could only have one gun. Now you might be asking, um, why is that? And the reason for that is because there are many situations as a civilian where I don't want people to know that I'm armed. And I can't really do that with something like this. If I have this, you're probably going to know I have it. And there are circumstances where that is okay, where that might actually be a positive thing for people to know that I am armed. However, in many situations, it may be better that nobody knows I'm armed and you could tuck this in a waistband holster really easily and nobody needs to know. Now you might be asking why I picked something like this instead of something like my CZ82 in 9mm Makarov or a 9mm Parabellum handgun of a similar size. And that's a good question. My reasoning for that is that if I could only have one handgun, I would want to have something that is more effective than this. Now it does come with the disadvantage of uh, the size. This other handgun is much larger, it would be harder to conceal, as you can see. But the advantage that this has is magazine capacity, and it also has the advantage of just being more powerful, being in a more powerful cartridge, and having that longer barrel. Now, although this would be less comfortable to conceal, if I could only pick one handgun, I would rather work around something this size than be restricted in practicality by something this size. In other words, I feel like this is a better compromise for firepower than something like this, which is leans more towards concealability. Now, I know lots of people would disagree with me. They might think that if they could only have one firearm, they would want a rifle or something like that to be able to defend themselves better. However, in my opinion, as a civilian, this would be the best thing for me because of concealability and because it's just lower profile than something like a rifle or a shotgun. So this is the part where I want to hear from you. If you could only have one firearm, what would you pick and why? And feel free to disagree with me. Feel free to tell me why you think that I am wrong. However, I think that for a civilian, a handgun is probably the best choice. In any case, I am 8mm Mauser Man, a freedom-loving American, and I do not have any limitations on how many firearms I can own, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Name John. Name John.